Hello, uh, today we will talk about multinational capital budgeting. So before we talk about this chapter, uh, it would be good to go back to what you studied before in your corporate finance course or business finance course. You talked about uh, capital budgeting. So there you studied the net present value, the internal rate of return, the payback, the discounted payback, and so on. So basically here, what we try to do is apply these concepts to a multinational firm. So when you talk about a review of domestic capital budgeting, so the main focus in that class tends to be on the net present value method. And what is the net present value method? So these are the steps we typically do. Identify the size and timing of all relevant cash flows on a timeline. So what are the relevant cash flows? So this, this might include the investment you make, and this also includes the cash flows the company receives. You want to know what is the size of each cash flow, the amount you receive in dollars, and when you receive that. The second is identify the riskiness of the cash flows to determine the appropriate discount rate. So for each company, it has a different risk and for that company, they want to use a cash flows, uh, uh, they want to use a, a discount rate that is consistent with the risk of their cash flows. And once we have that, we can find out the NPV. So what is the NPV? The NPV is the present value of the cash flows received minus the present value of the cash flows uh, you spent or the out outflows. So present value of the inflows minus the present value of the outflows. And basically, what is step number four? It tells you that when you look at the cash flows, you want to find out the, uh, these cash flows at the same point in time. So that's one of the reasons why we always want to find the present value or you want to find out the future value. So the NPV is the present value the cash flows received minus the present value the uh, cash flows that you spent or present value of inflows minus the present value of the outflows. Now, when you talk about international capital budgeting, what is the difference? There are two ways you can do that. So the first one is estimate future cash flows in foreign currency, convert to US dollars at the predicted spot rate, and calculate the NPV using the US cost of capital. So in this case, what we are doing is that, let's say GM is going to China. We want to find out the cash flows in the Chinese Yuan. Okay, And that's what we also do is that, for each cash flow, we want to find out the amount in US dollars. And to find out the amount in US dollars, typically what we do is, for today's cash flows, we basically use a spot exchange rate. And for each uh, future cash flow, we want to use the appropriate forward rate. And then, once we use the uh, appropriate forward rate, we can convert the foreign cash flow back into US dollars. And once we have that, we can calculate the NPV using the US cost of capital. So that is what we typically do in the case of the uh, one way to find out the uh, NPV. So basically here, what we did was we converted a foreign investment where we are receiving cash flows in the foreign currency into a domestic in, uh, project. And once we have it as US dollars, all that you're doing is finding out the NPV exactly the same that we did in previous classes. Okay. So let's go through one example of that. So in this case, what we are saying is that the risk-free rate in Europe is 3%. The risk-free rate in the US is 6%. For a US project, the cost of capital for the firm is 15%. And what we also have is when you talk about S0, dollar to euro, it basically tells you the direct exchange rate, or that is the price of one euro. So let's go through this example. So for this example, what this US company is doing is that they have to invest 600 euros today, and in year one, they get 200 euros. In year two, they get 500 euros, and in year three, they get 300 euros. And the spot exchange rate is 0.55265 per euro. So it's a little bit, you know, uh, confusing because, uh, you know, right now the euro is around 1.1, 1.2 and so on. In this case, we are saying that the euro is only worth 0.552 
US dollars. Okay, so what we want to do is we are given the spot exchange rate, we are also given the cost of capital in the US, we are given the forward rate, no sorry, we are given the interest rate in the US and the interest rate, the risk free rate in Euro. So once we have that, what do we want to do? We want to find out the forward rate for each of these years, year 1, year 2, year 3. And for year 0, we can use the spot rate to convert the euros back into US dollars. So let's look at the first cash flow. The first cash flow is 600 euros. And the spot exchange rate is 0.55265. So what we can do is we can convert the uh, year zero investment back into US dollars. All that you go do is multiply it by the spot exchange rate. So that gives you 331.625. So that's what we have here. Okay, so point, uh, 331.625. That is the year zero investment. And the next is, what about year one? So in year one, that is 200 euros. And what we need to do is, we need to find out the forward rate. So how do we find out the forward rate? To find out the forward rate, what we do is, we take the current spot rate, and we multiply it by one plus the interest rate, in, uh, in this case, 6% is the interest rate in uh, the US and 3% is the interest rate in Europe. So the forward price is given by the spot price times 1 plus the interest rate in the US divided by 1 plus the interest rate in Europe and that tells you that the forward rate or the expected spot rate in year 1 is going to be 0.5687. So what we find here is that the euro is strengthening against the US dollar. And why is it strengthening against the US dollar? The reason being that the risk-free rate in the US is higher than the risk-free rate in the foreign country. Okay? So the forward rate is 0.5687 and we can convert the year one cash flow of 200 euros back into US dollars and that gives you 113.7. So 200 is in euros and the forward rate is 0.5687 and the answer you have is 113.7. Now we want to do the same thing for year 2 and for year 3. So for year 2 what we have to do here is that what is the forward rate? So the forward rate is going to be 1.06 divided by 1.03 the whole squared times the spot exchange rate. Okay? So that is going to be 0.5687 times 1.06 divided by 1.03 and I think that gives you 0.5854 okay so 0.5854 is the forward rate in year 2 and once we have the forward rate in year 2 once we have the forward rate in year 2 that gives you a cash flow in year 2 of 292.6 now, what about year three? So for year three, the cash, the forward rate is going to be 1.06 divided by 1.03 raised to three times 0.55. And the forward rate is going to be 0.602, okay? And what it tells you is that for every year, the euro is appreciating against the US dollar. And the forward rate is going to be 0 0.602 and the year 3 cash flow in US dollars is going to be 180.7. So what we find here is that we converted an investment that was in euros back into an investment that is in US dollars. Okay? And now all the cash flows that we have are going to be in US dollars. So that becomes a domestic capital budgeting project and here the NPV is given by the investment that is negative 336.6 plus 113.7 in year 1 divided by 1 plus the interest rate 292.6 in year 2 divided by 1 plus the interest rate the whole squared plus the 180.7 which is the year 3 cash flow divided by 1.15 raised to 3 and the NPV is going to be 107.3.
So if you go back to what we just did, although the textbook says that both are the same, I think what is interesting is that, you know, if you look at the instructor's uh, notes and so on, basically what the publisher as well as the author says is that this is not a very advisable method. And the reason why it's not a very advisable method is because we have to do a lot of calculations. We have to find out the year zero cash flow, uh, which is not too bad, but we also have to find out three forward rates and convert all the cash flows back into US dollars and then find the NPV. The problem here is that, you know, sometimes when we are doing it mathematically, there's a chance we make small mistakes. And in that case, the answers could be wrong. So all said and done, I'd suggest that you go with the second method that we want to talk about next. Okay. So here, another recipe for international decision makers is estimate the future cash flows in foreign currency, estimate the foreign currency discount rate, calculate the foreign currency NPV, Uh, using the foreign cost of capital, translate the foreign currency NPV into dollars using the spot exchange rate. So what is the difference here? In this case, what we are doing is that we are keeping all the cash flows in foreign currency and then we are finding out the foreign cost of capital. So here, once we know the US cost of capital, so let's say Merck is a US company, it's going to Europe. In that case, we know the U.S. cost of capital. What we are trying to do is that what should be the Merck's cost of capital in Europe? And there, that is perhaps the most important step. And once we have that, we can find out the foreign currency NPV using the foreign cost of capital. And then finally convert the NPV back into U.S. dollars using the spot exchange rate. So what's the di big difference? The big difference is that you don't have to find out too many forward rates. You only have to find out one cost of capital and use that to find the NPV. So all said and done, I'd suggest that you go with this method rather than the previous method. The answer should be the same. So let's look at this example, the same one. So the cash flows are 600 euros investment in year zero and 200, 500 and 300 in years one, two and three. So what we want to do here is that we know the spot exchange rate. So the first step is to find out the cost of capital in the euro. And how do we do that? What we are saying here is that one plus the cost of capital in Europe is going to be one plus the cost of capital in the US times 1 plus the European risk-free rate divided by 1 plus the risk-free rate in the US. So basically here that comes from the Fisher effect and in this case what we are saying is that the risk-free rate in the US is 6%, the risk-free rate in Europe is 3%, which basically means that the cost of capital in Europe is going to be roughly 3% lower than the cost of capital in the US. Okay, So that's what we are do here. Let's find out the calculations. So if you do that, 1.15 is 1 plus the cost of capital in the US times 1.03, which is 1 plus the risk-free rate in the uh, Europe, divided by 1.06, that is the risk-free rate in the US. So what we find here is that the cost of capital in Europe is going to be 11.75. So like I told you, it's roughly 3% lower than the cost of capital in the US. And then we can find out NPV of the project at 11.75 and the NPV in euros is going to be 194.39. So, okay, so there the NPV is in year zero and all that we will do is multiply it by the current spot rate to find out the NPV in US dollars. So basically here the NPV is exactly the same as the previous case that is 107.43. So to summarize this, you have two equally valid approaches. And the first one, change the foreign cash flows into dollars at the exchange rates expected to prevail, find the dollar NPV. And the sec uh, second is find the foreign currency NPV using the foreign uh, cost of capital, translate that into dollars at the spot exchange rate. So both of them should give you exactly the same answer, but and which method you choose is your uh, preference. Okay, so it's entirely up to you to find out which is the 
better for you.